May your sprues always be full and your castings clean. Keep your sprue full. I've always read you need to keep your sprue full to avoid having it suck air and fill the casting with air pockets. I've always wanted that to happen, but I could never make it happen. Try as I might, I'd always see air go down the hole. Watch these. Now, if you watch that closely, I got the sprue full and then it sucked air in. And then I was able to fill it again and it sucked it in again and then it was filled. With aluminum, it's especially important to eliminate air because air bubbles will make bifilm oxide inclusions which will stay in the casting. Aluminum oxide film is generated almost instantly when molten aluminum contacts oxygen. This video is based on the pressurized feed system theory of metal casting. Based on this theory, you always want a full feed system, sprue, runner, and gate in order to avoid creating porosity in the casting. All I can tell you is what works for me. I use five steps to keep the sprue full and it works for me. First one is I determine what my normal pouring rate is, how fast can I pour the metal. Second one, I determine what the runner velocity is going to be and that's based on the depth of the runner. Third one, I look at what size runner the pouring rate and velocity winds up needing and then I can size the sprue as a fourth step once I know the runner size and then the fifth step I get everything put together and do a test pour to confirm that sure enough it works. For a pouring test I did four hammerhead patterns on two different days. The runners were hand cut, so there's a little bit different weight between the different castings. I didn't think I was pouring slower the second day, and that's why you need to do some tests to really see how you pour. My pouring rate varied from 6 and 2 thirds ounces per second down to 5.1 ounces per second. Now, I could probably hustle and push it and perhaps pour at uh, four cubic inches per second. That's just calculated based on 1.57 ounces per cubic inch. But to be conservative and with experience of how I am on different days, I'm going to choose three cubic inches per second. So I always know I can keep the sprue full. Step two, runner velocity. You need to know the runner velocity so you can make sure your pour rate keeps up with how fast the runner is taking the metal away. If you don't keep the runner full, you make more porosity in the casting. It would seem that the metal velocity in the runner would be affected by the runner size. Not for small castings like I pour. 
and with my runners are never over eight inches long and usually a lot shorter. Several of the glass flask videos demonstrate that runner size just does not affect velocity. What does affect velocity is the sprue. The velocity is determined by how far the metal must fall from the top of the pouring basin to the runner. So to determine the runner velocity, you have to know how tall your sprue will be. Since a lot of flasks are made from dimensional lumber, I'm going to choose three and a half inches. This assumes the runner is at the top of the drag and the sprue is all in the cope without a cush cup above. Here's the mathematics. The velocity in inches per second equals the square root of 772 times the depth that a body falls in inches. So I've calculated those out and you can see we're three quarters of an inch is 24.1 inches per second, three inches is 48, 12 inches is 96.2 inches per second. Now here's the same chart, but divided in every quarter of an inch, and I only went to five inches. And you can see that our three and a half inch target depth is 52 inches per second. And I added miles per hour off to the right, so you can see the 52, mile, 52 inches per second is right at three miles an hour. Now calculating runner size is quick and easy since we know all of the inputs. The equation is velocity equals flow divided by area. So velocity in inches, flow in cubic inches per second, and area in square inches. Or you can rearrange that to say that the area is going to be the flow divided by the velocity. So I've listed flow for two and a half, three, up to five cubic inches per second. And if you recall, the slowest flow that I had was 3.24 cubic inches per second. And then velocity, we're going to use 52 inches per second because we have a three and a half inch fall of the metal. So that calculates an area of between... 0 0.0481 and 0 0.0962 square inches. If you take the square root of that number, that gives you the side of a square. Now, of course, you can make it rectangular as long as it multiplies out to the same cross-sectional area. And then over to the right, I have some common sizes. You don't have to use a common size but I've pretty much settled on using either 0.2 inch, 0.25, or 0.280, which was basically the same as seven millimeter. So in this case, if I want to be able to pour at three cubic inches per second with a 0.24 side, I'm probably gonna use my six millimeter sprues that I've made, which are 0.236 on a side. That's a little more conservative because it's smaller, but I'll be sure to be able to keep the sprue flooded. Now, I could go as high as a quarter of an inch, 0.063, which if you do the arithmetic pretty much matches 3.24 cubic inches per second. If I go bigger than a quarter inch, 0.276 then I have to be sure that I can pour four cubic inches per second to keep the sprue flooded. This is the this is really the guts of the entire system to determine what size your runner is because that determines whether or not you can keep the air out and keep it a pressurized system. Gentlemen, size your sprues or ladies. Okay, this is a simple chart. It just has a lot of numbers on it. The first two columns we already looked at is the depth, and the second column is the velocity. 
based on the square root of 772 times the depth. And the third column I call constant flow area ratio. We want to maintain a constant flow all the way down the sprue. So since the flow equals velocity times the area, as the velocity goes up, the area has to go down. So this column is just a ratio of 24.1 inches per second at the three-quarter inch depth because that's where the metal actually enters the sprue. That's the top of the sprue. I'm, I'm assuming that I put all my basins to where the sprue is about three-quarters of an inch deep. If you want to be deeper or shallower, you can recalculate it. So if you go down uh, 24 inches per second, if you go down to 48 inches per second at 3 inches, you'll see that the area ratio was 0.5. So the size of the sprue needs to be half the number of square inches at 3 inches deep as it was at 3 quarters of an inch deep. So then in order to um, make a sprue, now the, the experts say that short sprues like this can be a straight taper from the top to the bottom. But with straight tapers in the uh, glass flask videos I did, I kept seeing areas where it wanted to neck down just, just below the top of the sprue. Might not be damaging, but so I've made up for different columns of sprue total depth, and let's look at three inches. At the three inch depth, we assign that velocity as one, and then we see how big it needs to grow as it gets to the top. And we've already looked at, at three quarters of an inch, it's gonna be twice as big as it is at the bottom. So I say at the top, this is area for each depth for one square inch at the bottom. So that's really just a percentage. If you have a tenth of a square inch at the bottom, then one inch deep on the three inch sprue is going to be 0.173. Just multiply the area at the bottom times that number and you'll get the right size. So you can you can multiply out for each of these for any different height sprue and figure out the difference between a straight sprue and a taper. I like to make the the uh, curved taper because it fits good. Uh, that's all there is to it. And you can interpolate between if you've got a three and a quarter inch deep sprue you can interpolate between it or you can make up a new chart because it's just basically the, for instance, the uh, the 1.04 at 2.75 inches deep for a three inch sprue, that's just 0.52 at 2.75 divided by the 0 0.50. So you take the velocity or the constant flow area ratio at one elevation and divide it by the one from where you started. So you see we've got a row of ones all the way down left to right. If that's not as clear as it should be, it's my fault. It's, uh, it's really pretty simple and it's pretty easy to then take these numbers and lay them out on a piece of paper and stick it to a piece of wood or program it in your 3D printer to print a sprue for three inch deep or for three and a half inch deep that's whatever area at the bottom and 216 percent of that area at the top and a quarter inch down 187 percent and another quarter inch down 167 percent for a three and a half inch deep sprue. That gives you a nice uh, trumpet shaped sprue. Now what I do with my sprues is I leave them constant thickness the same thickness as the runner and then spread them out so they're quite a bit wider as you go up to the top but you still have the same number of square inches. That's it. Thank you very much.